it's uh, it's uh, 7 p.m. According to, according to my phone, so uh, we'll get going. This is the Environmental Protection Commission regular meeting and public hearing agenda, Wednesday, January 6, 2021. Um, the current members I have are myself, Jim Millard, Gunnar, and Bill Wright. Uh, I don't know, is um, Michael Irvin here? No, okay. So there's, so there's four of us. Uh, just as a matter of uh, principal, Jim, I'll, I'll, I'll be requesting you to make the motions and Gunnar, you being the next senior person, I'll be asking you to second. Okay, okay so yeah. I hope everybody's okay with that. Yes, sir. Um, first piece of business we have is old business EPC 29, 2020, VB on 16 Ox Ridge Lane, proposing grading activity related to a replacement house within an upland review area. The site is shown on assessor's map number seven is lot number 22. Everybody has uh, received a copy of that, uh, a copy of the draft approval. And I have, Jim. And I have it with uh, Jim's careful editing. Um, I guess everybody's got that. Uh, are there any other changes people, people have? Okay, what we'll do is, um, I'd like uh, I'd like a motion, Jim, to propose to approve uh, EPC number twenty nine twenty twenty. Eric, is it appropriate to be able to ask a question about <coughs> part of the draft, or is not, that not? not? Of course. Um, I believe I included it in my uh, notes that I sent back to Rich for all of us to see. <clears throat> I also think it plays into another part of a discussion we're uh, having at EPC for stormwater management systems. But on the kind of the two thirds of the way down page three of the conditional approval, Eric and everyone, under the under the conditions, Roman numeral three conditions, paragraph three, article three. I pose a question because it one of the expectations of the approval is that, uh, and I quote from the uh, the uh, draft, a report from Mr. Danzer or other qualified wetland professionals shall be provided after each treatment for a period of three years. So my question is for the good of everything we're doing on our commission for the homeowner, a potential future homeowner, how is this monitored? How do we know that, that this actually takes place, Rich? Uh, well, those aren't all that many of them. I put them on my calendar. Okay. So you have a tickler file. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I have uh, a number of, uh, there aren't all that many of, uh, you know, after three growing seasons or inspections. And I get these letters in from uh, various wetland scientists that they were out. Uh, there's Bill Kenny, Alex Bach, or did the original, and they go out and they report back. So I do get them. Uh, now, what happens? Uh, I, I assume I, I in this in this case, oh, you would send out a reminder. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So so in case the house flips. Yeah. This I haven't had one. I haven't had one for treatment of bamboo. I mean, that's a, but I, I yeah. there's no reason. I'll figure out when the best time to treat is. Myself and Steve. And, and it may be, it's probably gonna be a spring. Mm. Whereas my other uh, reminders are after a growing seasons, which is, which is later in the year, yep. which yep. is the fall. So, uh, but this, there's no reason I just say, you know, uh, they'll treat it once and then, you know, whatever uh, uh, spring or whatever timetable, mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be spring mm -hmm. before the shoots come up. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So you have a tickler system yeah, that you so would go out and assuming the house flips, which I imagine oh, well. he's he's building to sell. Yes. That when he when the new when the new homeowner gets it, if the new homeowner doesn't get that notice, you would you would reach out to that homeowner and say, I oh, say yes, yes, that that he's yeah. responsible for. It. Yeah, again, it'll be the yeah. Typically, it's not spring, but there's yeah, whenever it'll be. In this case, I'll, I'll make it. Spring. Yeah. Okay. Are you okay, Jim? That's great, thank you. I'm, I'm glad to hear you do that, Rich. I, I didn't know how much of a burden it was on your calendar to keep all these various follow-ups. 
again, there there aren't as many as there are drainage systems, for instance. Okay. Hmm. As far that as makes that makes good sense. Eric, can I ask a question before we make the start the making a motion? Please. I'm not sure where I read it, but I think I read this somewhere in, in all the correspondence regarding this property that the depth of the excavation it was going to, it was not going to be as steep as they originally uh, excavated and that would be filled in. Is that my Yes, I, I yes. There is a con, uh, language in the in there that they're going to have to fill in a portion of the wall or a portion of the basement. Uh, as far as as far as the the compaction and inspections, I, I would leave that up to the building department. Uh, you know, they'll they'll have to inspect to make sure it's done properly for the for a foundation after having been excavated. I mean, I went over there yet for no uh, this afternoon to take a look at it again. It didn't look like anything had been done vis-a-vis -vis the uh, the excavation. Well, they they wouldn't have started any work until they get a uh, foundation permit. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, up until after your approval and 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 and, 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 and DNC, right? Or is it already? A... Yeah, it is not going to the planning zoning commission, but it does have to go oh, through. Oh, does okay. have to go through Dave. Okay. Okay. So no, they wouldn't have uh, started that until they're ready to, to uh, pull the, the foundation. And the foundation, they'll have to design, uh, again, um, the method of compaction and so on. I assume there's you know, an inspection process. For that, yep. Do you anything else? No, I'm, I'm, that's all right. Thank you. Okay, Jim, may I have a motion, please? Uh, yes, I, I would like to make a motion for EPC application number 29-2020 at 16 Oxridge Lane, uh, Oxridge Road. I thought it was Oxridge Lane. No, it's, it is, it's Oxridge Lane. It's Oxridge Lane. Okay. I missed that. Okay, race on the, okay on so the, we have a motion. Gunnar, do I have a second? Yeah, I second that motion. Okay. Um, Unless what do we say here, Rich? Unless there's a, unless there's an objection, I'll assume that that's it's unanimous consent. Okay. Uh, moving on to uh, new business EPC 34 2020 Blair and Greg Bijou, uh, 324 Hollow Tree Ridge Road, proposing house addition within an upland review area. The site is shown on assessor's map number nine as lot number 120 uh, 126. Okay. Um, is there somebody gonna, that's going to represent the Bijou's? Yes, uh, this is Lance Zimmerman. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Yes. I'm uh, the architect, and I'm representing Blair and Craig Bijou on their EPC application. And um, we're proposing several additions to an existing house where there were previous editions done, uh, they're new owners. There's an existing um, conservation easement that takes up, oh, I'd say half their property in the back, but the wetlands does come up pretty close to the existing house. And it's um, the almost the entire house is in the regulated area. So there really isn't much you can do with this house anywhere that wouldn't uh, go into the regulated area. I'm going to um, see if I can share my screen and put up the... Uh... Ah. Let's see here, go this way. Can you see that? Or do you Not have yet. it in front of you? Not yet. Uh, Not yet. Okay. Here we go. Let's see if we can work this out. Uh, I'm not, uh, I don't know why I, oh, there we go. Okay. Um, 
We're proposing to, there's an existing two car garage and they would like to expand the kitchen, create a mudroom and a side entrance way. And we are proposing to push the garage out approximately 13 feet. That gets the garage within 20 feet of the actual wetlands itself. The proposal on this side is basically going over the existing driveway. We will have to expand the existing driveway slightly on the west side, west and northwest corner over here. Um, and that would require taking down a couple of trees, which we would be uh, willing to either replace with four trees or I've been speaking with Rich, he'd actually like a row of um, shrubs to be planted along the edge of the, uh, the grass. And we are going to, I'm going to work with Rich to come up with a, a plan for the proposed shrubs, um, you know, using uh, like red twig dogwood and uh, winterberry and things like that to create kind of a definition along the edge of the grass and they're also the the clients are also going to remove the downed logs that are there and the piles of leaves that are also in there we are also going to look at expanding the kitchen slightly in this area that's going to be 30 feet from the wetlands and the revision that is on here that was not on the um, the drawings that I've turned in. We actually turned this in today. This is um, a revision that we're proposing to do, which would be there's an existing sunroom that is right there. And we were proposing to just expand it a little bit to the front in our original proposal. They actually used it over Christmas and it just felt like it was going to be too small and so they're proposing to expand it to the south and a little bit further to the west but right now the exist and we're going to remove this section on the back right over here to try to get it a little bit further away right now the existing sunroom is 10 feet from the wetlands the proposed would be eight feet from the wetlands so we are getting a little bit closer but not significantly. And um, again, everything on this house, I mean, you can see where the wetlands line is and you can see where the regulated area is, is, uh, you know, pretty much can't touch this house without, you know, being into the wet regulated area. We had originally, we had looked at pushing further back with the garage and things, and we just decided that it worked better to pull it to the front avoid getting closer to the wetlands as much as we possibly could in this area we're also going to expand the front portico just slightly um, and there will be a, a new covered portico and an expansion of the foyer which is extremely small for this size of a house and then there's a covered porch on the side um, the covered porch actually isn't in the regulated area or is the front portico but we on the original proposal we had approximately uh, it was uh 463 square feet of new impervious with the proposed that we had just turned in we are going to have 698 square feet of new impervious in the regulated area um, nothing is touching into any of the wetlands areas itself um, we are proposing to do well the garage would be a slab on grade we are proposing to do crawl spaces um, underneath the all the proposed livable areas so the mud room the expanded kitchen and the new uh, kind of sunroom space would have um, we're proposing crawl spaces underneath them we do need to go down 42 inches with any footings but we would, you know, keep them, we wouldn't excavate much out. We don't need more than uh, two feet underneath the joists in order to, um, you know, get the required area for the building department. Uh, so we won't be excavating out a lot. 
There are no, there is a sump pump in the existing house. I'm not exactly sure where it uh, pumps to at this point, but we will not be adding any um, pumps to our proposed additions as we are not putting basements in. We are proposing that there would be a stormwater management in the front that we would get designed by the Caltech people um, to meet the requirements of the proposed 698 square feet of new impervious so that we would collect the runoff from those areas. Um, are there questions? Jim Millard, any questions or comments? Yes, I was just looking at the plan as I was thinking through one. Who station easement, Rich? Is this the town? Uh, no, it's it's uh, in favor of the town, but it's still privately owned. It's still the, the owner. Um, the so it sits in it sits inside the one point seven one six acres of land. Ah, uh, yes, yes. The easement is everything beyond the stone wall. Yes, uh, I can see that. Nice, very nice wetland on the you know, yes. side of the stone wall, which is in good condition. And uh, with the exception of uh, as land suspension, it needs to be cleaned up with the logs and so forth. My suggestion that he get uh, up, you know a planting plan uh, along that just to uh, soften that edge around around the whole uh, perimeter. Shrub shrubs around the wetland. Uh, uh, from from border to border. Uh, yeah, it could be. I have to go out and see it, what makes sense, but mostly most of the border of that of where there's a lawn now. Okay, because that would be a condition for me. Okay. Okay. To that that absolutely. You you know staff is you know staff approved. Right. Okay. Yep. Well, you would have probably have a chance to see it by the next meeting. So. I'll, oh, okay. I'll work with Lance said he would want to. Okay. Come up with something. Okay, because he offered it. I I hundred percent agree with that. So. But I want to make sure that it gets in as a condition. So I'm sorry, Jim. Could could I ask Mr. Zimmerman to expand just a little further for my own better understanding of your intentions, Mr. and Mrs. Bijou's intentions? I realize uh, that you, uh, I'm framing a question here as I go. The, okay. So the expansions to the house, I'll describe them as you. Your your work is helping them think through putting expansions to the north and the south. Yes. And I, and I think you said it was not preferred or you studied it and it didn't really work. And I certainly understand that. I've done many additions to homes over my long years. Um, but by scooching up closer to wetlands and upland review areas it what gives me pause and asks is there another view that can be taken and i need rich's help here do we have a, a red line beyond which we're really unlikely to approve a building as close to wetlands as or upland review areas what is the by the book setback uh guidance rich your mic is off go ahead i'm sorry um well every property is different you regulate within 50 feet and there's a wide variety my philosophy has always been um you know these folks have a fairly modest lawn area uh, some of the lawn is uh currently wetland and that you know they're they have the right to continue to mow that so by restoring an area of lawn and creating a buffer an additional buffer uh to what i think is a high quality wetland is a is a more than reasonable trade trade-off um i mean you're, you're not going to get a healthy wetland in the same area where these buildings are proposed or where the additions are proposed it's always going to be either lawn or in this case you know some you know i think are reasonably modest expansions but you know also in favor is the way they've uh, you know they've maintained the easement in a very healthy condition so i give you know, that that was at the time it was subdivided i guess considered the most valuable 
you know, part of the wetland, that, and uh, that, that's been more than adequately protected. And that, and that is the conservation easement you're referring to as a very high quality wetland. It, the high quality wetland in the easement and and the uh, the wetlands immediately adjacent um, it, it are both high quality. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is contiguous with the Diller property that we've. I was going to ask that a second ago, Eric. Yep. Sorry. Yeah. No. I I I can kind of picture it. I did not get out there. I want. For the record, everybody know I have not gotten out there, but I will be able to get there tomorrow uh, to eyeball that. Um, and that, that I hope you can get a sense is behind my question. Having not physically in, inspected it, as I try to do every property we uh, consider. Um, is another, way, another way of looking at it, Jim, is they're, they're, uh, they're two feet closer to the wetlands, but between the house and the uh, the proposed house and the wetland is is roughly 25 feet of grass so it's it's not going to change all that much yeah i mean that's on the south side that's on the south the, the edge side. of the lawn goes right along there right now and that's where we're proposing to put in you know um the shrubs and uh, so this is all, I mean, it's all wetlands back in here, but if we're, you know, if we can keep this area and keep people from expanding the lawn by putting that in, I think that really goes a long ways toward, you know, mitigating anything that could happen in this area and still keep the wetlands very nice. And the, the addition on the north side, while it's technically closer to the wetland, it's over a paved driveway. Right. Right. It, right. It's all already all disturbed and completely impervious in that area. So yes, where we were 28 feet, I do believe from there and we're 20 feet now, we really haven't changed anything on that side, um, you know, closer to the wetlands. We are adding a little bit more here, but we took that into consideration with the impervious um, square footage that we're proposing to uh, mitigate for this water runoff. I thank both of you for those clarifications, and uh, I have no more questions. Gunnar, on um, I was I walked went over there yesterday and walked around the back of the property. Um, um, it, it sounds like even though there's a, a little bit of increased and in impervious, um, you know, space, the trade-off sounds to me like a basically a net positive so i think it you know it does it seems seems pretty minimal what you know the, the impact so i i don't really have any other questions all right uh yeah i went out there and looked at it and i agree with rich's assessment it uh it's not going to have a big impact and it is a really nice wetland back there and they have taken care of or they haven't degraded it, put it that way. So uh, yeah, I don't have any problem with it. Okay. Uh, I think you've answered my questions and concerns. Uh, just one thing, Jim, the reason we have can we have uh, regulatory authority over 50 feet from the wetland is because um, people can do things. Well, it actually extends, uh, it, ex it extends as far as um, if somebody does something that affects the inland uh, wetland or water course okay and significantly affects it that's where we have regulation right. and that's where regulatory authority by by by, uh, by state statute and, and so um that's where we look for for significant long-term impact fair rich and and so that's why we're it, it's defined as 50 feet but if someone were to go 100 feet away and i don't know create a mountain You'd sit there and say, "Well, that's going to change. That's going to change the contours, and it changes, and it changes the effect on the wetland and water course." And, and in essence, we could reach out as long as we, as long as we had right. professional uh, say that there would be a. Uh, that's true. We go beyond your review area, but it, it gets tricky going beyond your review area. But it's possible. It's it's possible. You know, under un, under unusual circumstances, it would it's possible. So that's that's why we use the. Um, I, I forget what. Oh, man, 
Asia setting. I, I forget what legal legal process it's it's, it's a, anyway it's in the regulation there and there was a uh, court case about that um so anyway jim i wanted to, to give you my my uh, spin on that no it's very helpful thank you mr chairman okay so i'm all i'm all I'm, i think this is a reasonable reason reasonable thank you lance for, uh, you. for your concise presentation so um yeah. if there's questions. anybody from the public that would like to uh oh it's not a hearing Oh, sorry. Uh, so, I, I thought this was a public hearing, but it's not. So, uh, so, so my, you know, my bad. Um, I guess, I guess, what we'll do then is um, just just write it up. Yeah, write it up, and we'll review the draft next, the the draft approval for in February. Eric, I have a question before we go further. Yes. So, it looked like there was quite a bit of standing water. Uh, as you went back, to, you know, on the backyard of this pr property and, and proceeded, I guess it would be to the east. I guess the question to Mr. Zimmerman is: Is, is there all, or do you know, is there always standing water there? Does it ever dry out, or does it get worse? Or well, when I was out there this last summer measuring, it was there was no water anywhere. Um, but we had an extremely dry year. Um, you know, we've had snow and freezing uh, and actually quite a bit of rain uh, a couple of weeks ago. So the the ground there is definitely always seems wet. I mean, there's no doubt about that. The um, Coltec system that we would end up putting in is going to have to definitely be, um, you know, low boy type um, thing because if we go too deep, there's going to be water. Um, and there's no doubt about that. Um, as far as standing water, I mean, it's it's there at times, and other times it is not. I just my first thought was that may be a vernal pool, which is a good thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Can you get some glass of water, please? If, it, if the water's there long enough, water's there long enough into the spring to allow uh, being amphibians, uh, that's a good thing. And then if it dries up in the summer, that's a good thing. Too shallow. To, you yeah. know, it may be. I, I plan to go out and take a look at that one, uh, but I think that may be a good, a good thing. Yeah, vernal pools are always good. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Thank you. No. Okay, then we'll move on to the public hearing section. Thank you. Let's, let's open up EPC twenty seven twenty twenty. William and Tara Worm, 17 Mystic Lane, proposing swimming pool and patio construction in a regulated area and upland review area. The site is shown on assessor's map number 18 as lot number 62. This has been continued from December 2nd. Um, okay, who's who's on for the applicant? That would be me, Sean Malters. Sean, good. Uh, give me just a sec. Let me get my camera going. Can you guys see me? Hear me okay? Yes, we can. All right. Good evening, EPC, and Happy New Year. Uh, when we last, uh, I'm going to share my screen, if you don't mind. Uh, at last, uh, last month's meeting, there were some comments from the board uh, uh, looking for us to address a couple of things. I'm just going to go right down the line and uh, show you what we've done in response. Um, first of all, it was requested that we show the extent of the wetlands flagging. Uh, and you can see that here. And this is on uh, LA1. Mm -hmm. And an additional uh, request was that we add some more uh, erosion control measures to protect the brook uh, to the east. So we put added a silt fence down here below the construction entrance, sort of as a uh, um, demarcation of the area, uh, you know, where we're actually allowed to go and to, to encourage or keep trucks from from going beyond that point. Uh, and then there was another question that a board member had uh, regarding this existing rain garden. Uh, I was asked at the time, what was this for? And they didn't have a clear answer. Uh, I now know that that was actually installed to service the roof leaders 
on this side of the house, the side of the house that's facing the proposed work. Uh, so in order to address that, uh, what we've done, pardon me, we've basically added a second Coltec unit. Uh, as you'll recall, we're actually under the 1,000 square foot drainage exemption, but we had originally added a Coltec to service um, uh, the pool area, but we've also at the same time added a second unit down here, and that's because we're going to A, uh, connect the roof leaders that used to go into this rain garden, which as you know was not working or functioning properly anyway, uh, but B, uh, there's also a sump discharge coming out of the basement that a board member had asked about, and we're going to run that into a solid drain and into the Coltec rechargers. And of course, now you can see with the extent of the wetlands flagging, I've also moved the Coltex and they are out of the wetland area. Um, and there was a final uh, comment or concern from one of the board members regarding some mitigation plantings along the brook. Uh, the brook is actually 100, the, the wetlands border of the brook itself is 128 feet away from the boundary of proposed work. Uh, it, it's so far away, it just uh, it doesn't make sense to add mitigation plantings there when in fact we have an incredibly robust mitigation planting strategy uh, to offset the work already. Uh, and, and we've dedicated an entire page of our drawing set to that strategy. Uh, so uh, that's it. I'll uh, open the floor back up for any further questions. Okay, thank you, Sean. Jim Millard? Any, you're on mute. Newton, I started to talk without being on mute. I'm still kind of just looking at my plans once again. I, I actually think I'm fine and appreciate uh, Mr. Walter's explanations right there, but I'd reserve the right to come back and ask uh, sure. be, before you close it up. Okay. Gunnar? No, I'm fine. I think, I think they've addressed pretty much all of our questions and concerns. Thank you. Bill? Yeah, a couple of questions. Uh, I was looking at your demolition work item. And number three, you had proposed pool equipment pad located outside of the wetland. It doesn't look like it's outside of the wetland right down there. Number three, it looks like it's right. Uh, is that really outside of the wetland when, you, when you've got that noted on this? Uh... Actually, no, it's not. You, you, caught, you caught an oversight. Um, it's not outside of the wetlands. Can you move it so it is? Yes, we can, absolutely. Okay. Uh, the other item I have is, and I think we've all talked about this out, uh, lawns become encroachment areas and eventually we all have, uh, it's not as hard to get things done when the lawn is there. So I'm a little concerned about where you're gonna be pulling out uh, a lot of these plants, uh, a lot of these, what do we call them, eradicate, anonymous and the uh, rosebuds, which are outside of your planted areas. And I just want to make sure if you eradicate those, that we do not put a lawn back in there and make some kind of stipulation that that doesn't occur. That's down at the bottom of your, uh, your plant. Down in this area here. Yep. Okay. Um, we could certainly add that note to the, the drawing that that could be, uh, it, that would be replaced with native vegetation as opposed to lawn. Okay, that'd be great. That's all I had. Okay, thank you. Um, no, Sean, you've done a great job present, presenting here. Uh, yeah, I got the I got the one with uh, that Bill caught of uh, three. The uh, um, but thank you, Bill. Um, no, I'm all set with this. Um, Jim, would you like us to go back to you? Uh, I'm fine. You satisfied my questions, Bill. Thanks for being so thorough. Okay, then with that, um, Rich, we got a couple of conditions. Oh, excuse me, thank you. Uh, yeah. Somebody from the public that would like to speak. Doesn't sound like it is going once, going twice. Okay, I guess there's no public comment on this one. So I, I have those conditions. You have those conditions. Uh, you'll uh, Rich, Rich will write up a draft for next for next meeting, uh, a draft a draft approval for next meeting that we'll all see, 
in our next package. Okay. Oh, so now we need a, mo a motion to close the public hearing. Okay. Uh, Jim, may I have a motion to close the public hearing, please? Yes, I, I make that motion to close the public hearing for EPC 27-2020. Okay, uh, Gunnar? I second that motion. Okay, then without objection, uh, we'll close the public hearing and move on to the next piece of business. Thank you, EPC. Uh, um, the next piece of business, the next public hearing is EPC 32-2020, Ellen Panagenius, uh, 26 Parsons Walk, proposing a replacement house and related construction activities in an upland review area. The site is shown on assessor's map number 20 as lot number 30, as lot number 31. So we're opening this and uh, and we will listen to this on February 3rd, okay, at the applicant's request. So, okay, so we'll, so keep your you keep your papers and uh, keep your papers for now. So we'll see what happens. Okay, agent approval. Um, no action necessary until the commission receives an appeal of the approval within 15 days of the publication date, per section 1212 of the Inland Wetlands and Water Course uh, regulations. EPC 33-2020, Daniel and, uh, and uh, Jennifer Hagany, Six Berry Lane, proposing filling and grading for a pool patio within an upland review area. This site is shown on assessor's map number 66 is lot number 54. Rich, what? Um, I'm not convinced there's even wetlands on the adjacent property. It's shown on our map, so we regulate it. So a yep. little, little bit of the work. Uh, when it was shown to me before I went to P and Z, uh, is within that 50 foot review area from the adjacent property. It, is P and Z having a hearing on this? Correct. Okay. Is that going to be a public hearing too, et cetera? Hearing. Well, for the filling and grading aspect. It has to be. Okay. So they're going to have a public hearing on this. So I think that's, you know, uh, that's, we have any. Yeah, I, do have, I do have a question. Uh, I walked out there and I could not find any wetlands off site anywhere near close. As a matter of fact, when I looked at the wetland map that the, the town has, there's a, there's a big house on most of this so-called wetland that's on the other side of their property. I guess my question is, how do we, when we look at some of these, how do we correct that map if that's the case? Because I, you know, I'm no expert, but I could not find any wetlands anywhere near on either side where they were marked on there, on the, on the other people's property. I, how do we yeah. correct this so we don't have to go through that again in the future? Well, they don't have to go through. Does other folks ever come in with a new survey and have a soil scientist confirm that? Um, I mean, they, they would have to have a soil scientist just for the record go out, dig test holes, confirm that the soils are not wetland soils, and flag it and put it on a survey. Um, but until that time is, I, I you know I can't change the map without that. So it's a fairly innocuous process for them to come in for an agent approval, just to be able to say, you know, we, we may it may or may not be wetland, but you know, there's no even if it was, there's no impact. Yeah. No, and I agree with that. I'm just trying to understand this process about correcting our maps and how it goes through. And what I'm hearing here is they're going to have to pay money to have that done if they didn't believe, and so it's not worth their while and in a case like this. Point if they if at some point they don't have to do anything unless they're going to build, uh, and then they're going to have to do a survey. I'm talking about the adjacent owner. They'll have to do a survey, and it's not a significant expense to confirm whether there are wetlands. And in terms of changing the town map, uh, roughly every 18 months or so, we take 50 or 60 of these that we that we've accumulated, um, and we change the map at, for free. The, ta the, the okay. Map. No, that's good. That's the answer I was hoping that I was hoping that was the answer. We're actually you're keeping track of some of these where it looks like it's obvious, like the Ox Ridge one we're talking about. You know, that whole that whole area is called wetlands on our maps, but it's really not that. So I got right. you. Right. Okay. So, although on that one it turned out there actually was a little bit of wetlands. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, but it turned out there was, right. Yeah, exactly. So okay. So you you take note of where you can and adjust it to make it more accurate over time. Got it. Thank you. So so historically at one point, it came in between 1976 and today. Someone came in and it was designated as a wetland, so it so it got on the map somehow. Well, it got on the on the original map. If 
if you look at the, the wetland map up in, especially in the north side of town, there are properties that are developed that are 100% wetlands on the map. And that's just not possible. There's a house, driveway, septic. <laughs> Got it. We don't know, okay. Don't know. I mean, some of those lots were filled substantially, and there are no more no. wetlands. Some of them, they, they really didn't fill very much. And no. you'll find cases where the wetland goes around the house and comes fairly close. Yep. So it depends on how it was developed. Good, thank you. That answers my question. Appreciate it. So yeah, we'll we'll we, we get those changes. I I think I've been through three or four of those, at, at, in in my, during my tenure here. And so you know. And there is a process. A homeowner can change can request to change the map. But then they have hearing fee, and we have to go through. Yeah, that's a yeah. yeah. So the town does it, you know, as part of their regular uh, update. Good. Excellent. Okay, so. Uh, we finished that. Okay, now moving on to other business. Other business is a uh, discussion of stormwater management system maintenance on residential properties. That was a subcommittee formed uh, between myself, Jim, and Michael Irvin. And uh, we've exchanged some, some documents between us, but uh, I, but because of the holiday period, it was difficult to get together. So so I'll you know, you know we'll we'll all start sending out some emails so that we can get at least get together on the. Uh, you know. Uh, yeah, that that are uh, so we can get together. So um, very good. I thank you for finding the Greenwich one. That was cool. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing what Greenwich does. But uh, so I'm, I'm not flies in Darien, but yeah. Okay. Um, minutes of December two. Uh, typos. So, so, so we have. Okay, Jim, you're. You saw you my know, notes, you, right? Okay, you, you should have been an English teacher, you know. So <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm impressed. So um, everybody's got those changes. I guess we'll. Um, you know, are there any questions and comments on these? Well, I, I had that question. No, I don't Bill know if you had. had Bill did have yeah. that. That's right. Well, yes, I had. Uh, uh, Bill Wright also sent me some additional oh. things. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, are you okay with that? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. So, so then, how do how do we find out what happens? You know, we bring up suggestions when they're agent approvals to Rich, and then how do we find out your results with the landowner about whether they agree to those suggestions or not? Like in those two those two cases that I that I brought up, I was curious if we get, gained any traction or not. We can talk about it. Just give me a call. We'll talk about it. Yeah. That's something we all shouldn't talk about as a commission. You, know, you want to talk about it? Oh, sure. Um, it's a pretty quick meeting, yeah, so. We don't have to look at it. Uh, the one, uh, Greniston Lane, they're going to put a, uh, uh, they're going to agree to the condition, or they did, to have a planted buffer uh, to eliminate lawn along the seawall. Um, and the other one, honestly, I, I could not make them or tell them they have to remove existing equipment that's been there for the spa equipment. Um, I mean, I, that's. Just something it's it's been there and I, I can't see how okay no I, I, fair okay there was the other thing uh speaking with the uh the, the engineer the, the way the uh the pool stormwater was designed is the terrace is the detention system <laughs> and that cannot well it is it can't that can't be within the well yeah so okay that was, so so part of my question was not just that but so in the future if we do bring up these how do we as a commission, know what the results are when you go back to them. Since it's an agent approved, we really don't hear anymore, and you kind of wonder what took place. How, what's the process for this? Um, I, I guess you just have to, to ask me. I mean, we we follow up on the conditions, so um, well, but, but, I mean, but, they, they won't get a CO, for instance, on the addition until they comply with the condition, just like the permit. Just like any other permit. Well, no, no, I, I don't mean that. I mean, just mean when we bring up an item to you, we, we just want to know how it ended up, right? And and I guess we don't, it kind of goes into a hole and we don't know unless we call you directly. And I, I just think there should be a better process for that. Um, post the, uh, the decisions on the town website. Um, I mean, I don't. Unless you have the option, 
any member has the option of kicking it over to being an individual application. You, you could do that if it's. Um, well, I would. Well, I would think, Richard, in in this case, if we went there and go, you know, you really should put uh, a plant thing there. You know, uh, there we you know we should do something like that. And the owner, and you suggest that to the owner, and the owner comes back and says, no. No, um, that's a, too much of a burden. I think I'd bring it back. At at that point, at that point, I would yeah. I would say if somebody were to reject your suggestion, at that point I'd say kick it back and we open up uh, and and we and we open up it and we open up and have the, we have the person come in front of us. Okay, so it's it's not a public hearing; it's just new business. Okay, well, I can. It's, it, would that be? Would, yeah, Bill, that's, that's, the, uh, that's a good idea. You like that? I do. Yep, I do. And so, so th that well, I mean, that way, because what we're doing is it, it's easy for him. It's easy, excuse me. It's easy for the applicant to refuse to do it. Although typically they would just, you know, they would just agree to it, whatever Rich's suggestion was. But 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 Rich has to have a stick, okay? And the stick is hey, you don't have to do it. But I'm but the agent withdrawal has now been questioned by the the EPC commission because of this. So therefore, it's withdrawn. So therefore, you have to make a formal application, right? Yeah, no, you know, for a formal I mean, application. Yeah, you know, it's a way of moving. Um, I mean, it would depend on how egregious the egregious the request is. Yeah. Were something really right. you know, substantial, then I would I would say just well, to be honest, though, I probably wouldn't do those as an agent approval. Well, I, I'd be. Uh, the one, the first one you looked at, uh, 324 Hollow Tree Ridge. Yeah. Um, I didn't see that as being an agent approval, um, just because I knew there'd be some questions. Yep. Yeah. And I did believe that it was appropriate to have condition of a buffer, additional buffer. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's easier for me to make an application where I can put those conditions, mm -hmm. and the applicant can object to the conditions sure. as part of the application process. Right. Or they can appeal it. Yeah. You know, in an extreme case. They actually. could appeal it, but they're not that, gonna appeal it. Yeah. That uh, never happens without warning. <laughs> no, no, that you know that, that would only happen public hearing. Well, I'm sure you have conversations ex parte that that that, that would well, go to another, night, like for you and Lance yeah, to another, in this example. That's another point is I, I can I don't have the restraint of being ex parte. I can mm -hmm. talk to uh, applicants and their and their representatives. Um, without having to worry about ex parte communication, mm. even during a hearing. Yeah, no, and and so you can say, you know, say what you want. This is, you know, yeah, right. you 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 can inform yeah. the applicant that. Yeah. that. Yeah. Said, oh, that's crazy. I don't want to do that. Well, then you would know it. Yeah. You know, that. I could tell you that before. Oh, yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, well, I, I'll, I'll I'll end this one more time. But so let's say we had done the Stony Brook one. At a public hearing, and a, at least a, amongst the commissioner, would we have more leverage to have them move some of that spa equipment, and possibly move that pool? Had we done it that way versus the agent? Well, again, consider that you you would have to have uh, I'd have to find some expert to tell me why that pool equipment is damaging the river, or why the spa equipment is, and I'd have to you'd have to have some testimony at a public hearing why it. It, you know, it should be uh, 55 feet away from the wetland versus, or the, the river versus 50, you know. Uh, okay, no, that's fair too. So yeah, so we have to then have our expertise in line other than just general bantering between us and the applicant hearing it, and, and if they the, wanted to push it. The only, the reason for the agent approvals was that, um, you know, some of these small things, uh, you know, they, they, if they become applications, it's, it's much more time consuming. I agree. Totally agree with you. Yep. Yeah. That, okay. hey, Bill, hey, Bill, when I joined, all the stuff would come in front of us as applications. And no, that, I agree with you. Commission and just said, you know, Nuts. someone wants to put a generator pad in the upland yeah. review area. And we're sort of yeah, like, yeah. we're putting, you know, one of our neighbors in Darien through this whole process. To, to put you know uh, you know a six by four concrete pad for yeah, you know, yeah. it was like yeah, you know let's you know what uh, let, let you know our time can yeah. be used yeah. as used used in better things so anyway well, that was that was the thinking that's why the statute was 
with every town with the same problem. Yeah. No, and I totally, I totally agree. I was just kind of under, trying to understand the press. I'm good. Moving on. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Um, that was now. Uh, a, a, a Jim, can I have a motion to approve the minutes of December two, twenty twenty? As amended. By the way, Jim, you're on mute. Oh, good. Sorry about that. You are correct. Now I'm unmuted and i'd like to make that motion to approve the minutes from the december 2 2020 uh epc meeting thank you uh, gunar may i have a second please i second that motion okay then uh without objection uh the minutes are approved okay now thank we you. get to uh, uh election of officers for 2021 um i i think uh you know Speaking for myself, I would like to continue on as chair. Uh, Jim, I can't. I, I, if there's there's four of us here, um, we're missing Susan and Michael, and um, I, you know, I have no reason. To, do you know if Susan would would Susan like to continue on as secretary? I guess, so. She hasn't indicated it's you know she's her non interest. Okay, Jim. Would we, you know, and and Gunnar and Bill, you know, would you know, uh, since there's only four of us, and yeah, we can vote, I guess, right? We have a quorum. So would um, would eight, would would anybody like to be chair, vice chair, or secretary? I'd like to endorse Eric to remain and continue as our able chairman, and uh, I'm willing to continue and my supporting role of your good efforts as vice chairman perfect okay um so 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 we'll have a slate here too um of myself as chair uh, jim millard as vice chair and susan as secretary and so uh we take a vote on that yes do i need a do i need a motion okay may i have a motion please jim I'd like to make a motion as just discussed on the slate for the officers for 2021 uh, as outlined. Gunnar? I heartily endorse that slate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, then, uh, this, uh, then uh, without objection, the slate is endorsed. So we have our officers for 2021. Um, that's, I don't think there's any other business at this point in time. Okay, so uh, Jim, may I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? I am happy to make that motion and thank all of us for agreeing to move it a little bit earlier to 7 p.m. Yes. I think it's I think it's a, a good a, a good adjustment and make a motion to close tonight's EPC hearing, the first of this new year of 2021. Happy New Year, everybody! Thanks, Gunnar. Second, please. I enthusiastically second that. <laughs> Thank you for uh, putting out the, the note about the seven o'clock meeting because honestly, I missed that. Yep. Yeah, we got. No, I think the seven o'clock's much better. So, yeah. and so, no, I don't. Anyway, without objection, uh, we are we are adjourned. Thank you so much Thank for making the meeting, and a happy New Year.